Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are doing another rapid fire QA episode. Is this number five? Oh, gosh, I can't I think keep this track. Is number five, rapid fire QA five. He's going to try to get me going on such a rant or, or stump me so much that I, I can't, I can't, uh, but I have to rein him in. Time. Yeah, yeah, we, we've got time constraints on each of these questions. If you're new Stop to this, this will be fun. These are good times. <laughs> If you're listening, know that there is a video episode of this episode. You can check it out uh, on YouTube. You can find it at Whistle K Martial Arts Radio. We embed it in the show notes. And if you want to learn all the things that we got going on at Whistle Kick, go to whistlekick.com. If you buy something in the store to help us out, hopefully it's something that you like and not just helping us out. Use the code podcast15, gets you 15% off. Uh, by the time this comes out, there is a very slim chance there will be more sparring gear nice in in the store so uh fingers crossed it's it's coming i put it in order very small order but it's coming it's been a long time <laughs> uh other ways you can help us out buy a book buy a program at whistlekickprograms.com and support the patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash whistlekick you can do as little as two bucks a month and we've got free stuff when you are willing to give us money. We're going to give you so much stuff back. We're going to give you exclusive content you won't get anywhere else. We're also going to give you physical stuff, stickers and shirts and whatever, and it, all that information is over there. So go check it out. Patreon.com slash whistle. Andrew. Yes. Rapid fire time. Rapid fire. I like these. These, these are, are fun. These, these are, are really fun. fun. Um, this is I've the first got, time we've done it in person. I so know. The I know. dynamic may be different. Okay. So we've got five questions today. Okay. And at the maximum I'm giving you is five minutes on each question. Okay. That's it. Okay. And I have a stopwatch right here. Okay. Next time we might need to trim that time. We need, should we start marching the time down and marching the questions up? Oh, that, we could do that. But then Jeremy, you have seven seconds to answer this but, question. But then it, comes, then it becomes more like just a trivia. It does. So that's true. We'll see. But for right now, we're going to say five. Okay. And if you can get another five, that's awesome. All right. Okay. So some of these oh. questions are from me. Some are from our listeners. All so right. question number one, this is from me. We are a traditional martial arts podcast. Yep. However, we can't ignore the fact that mixed martial arts exists. Right. What are some things that mixed martial artists, or rather, what are some things that we as traditional martial artists can learn from mixed martial arts? I think the number one thing, and this is where <coughs> people bring up Bruce Lee as the original mixed martial artist, is this concept of throw away what doesn't work keep what does and constantly look around at, you know, what are the options in experiment? I make one small change to that concept. And that is just because something doesn't work for you doesn't mean you should throw it out because it may work for someone else or it may work in some specific scenario that you hadn't considered. And so training things, when, when we talk about training as a traditional martial artist, everything we do is not directly applicable to combat. And that is something that people forget, that there are movements that increase flexibility or balance or accuracy or, or, or right? Just because I'm not going to step in a ring or an octagon or the street and deploy this technique does not mean it doesn't have value. Sure. And if you look at any other athletic pursuit, and I think it's fair to say that a sport like football or basketball or baseball is probably a little more advanced than MMA just because of time. There are cliche drills that occur <clears throat> in football, like, like the high knees, mm -hmm. right? Most of us have seen and even participated in a high knee ladder in the context of football or soccer. Sure. It builds coordination, <clears throat> it builds some flexibility, it builds some first step explosivity power but you're not going to get out on the soccer field and do this or the football field, right? Like it doesn't work that way, but it, it is something that we can cross train into to make ourselves better. So to sum it up, we should look to MMA as an example of where cross training is very successful, mm -hmm. but not hold that up as the yardstick by which we define traditional martial arts because the goals are different. All right, good. That was quick. I would say uh, theme music. Mm. <laughs> theme music would be cool. You know, the thing that we're working on, we talked about, theme music. No. 
Oh, did we? Did I not mention that? No. There's a thing that we're working on. No. Hopefully, we'll look. Yeah, that that's on the list. Interesting. All right. It may not happen initially, but it'll happen. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna walk around. With, I think I'm just gonna walk around with theme music, just playing all the time. Like that episode of Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Question number two. Okay. Uh, this question is from Lessie, actually. Okay. Why is Jeremy the worst? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Ready? She wouldn't say that. This is a two-part question. The first okay. one's easy. What's your favorite animal? All the animals in the world. What's your favorite animal? Dogs. Okay. If you it's could dogs. invent, if you could invent a martial arts style based on that animal, what would it be like? What would that fighting style be like, and why? Yes, right. And go. So the the sarcastic, playful person in me just wants to say that it's peeing on people. <laughs> <laughs> that you just come up and you lift your leg and you pee on them. They would run away. They would hopefully run away. Okay. Um, but I think that there's a more serious thing sure. there. And honestly, this is one of the things that I find fascinating about Kung Fu and animal style Kung Fu, which I've not trained. Mm -hmm. But the idea that you look at an animal as inspiration and how mm -hmm. can you apply what that creature does in a way that we can mimic it combatively. What do dogs do? Dogs, if you watch dogs play, you know, kind of play fight, there's a lot of running around mm -hmm. and there's periodic engagement, detach, run around. Very, very much like Cabo Yeah, sure. And so we, we, could, we could take some, some of that. Um, dogs will go for the throat. You know, it's a vulnerable spot. How often when we talk about martial arts in the context of self-defense, do we train people to strike to the throat? We talk about it, but we don't ever practice it. It, it really yeah. doesn't happen that often. Yeah. And the, I think the reason in most schools is because it is hard to practice that safely. Yeah, sure. Right. If I, if, if we're, if we're practicing some self-defense stuff and I miss and I punch you in the, in the head, it's probably going to hurt my hand as much as it hurts your head. Sure. Right. But I can teach us anybody who has raised a small child has been kicked or punched in the throat <laughs> by a toddler <laughs> and all but leveled. It's happened. I've had I've had kids, friends, kids punch and kick me in the throat, and it's like, yep. Am I dying? <laughs> right from this really small. So I think that's an aspect of it. Uh, I think there's something to be said for dogs tend to bite at legs because if you can take out a leg, even even take out one leg, mm -hmm. if a dog can do enough damage to one of the legs, the other dog isn't going to fight there very well. Yeah. Right, you're a tripod, and you're yeah, hobbling. you can you can hobble around, and and with time, dogs can even, you know, learn how to work with that. But when we talk about self defense, we don't usually talk about destroying the leg. In the context of MMA, we think about leg kicks, kyokushin, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. does a lot of leg kicks. I, I think leg kicks are really valuable. But what about if I mean we're both wearing flip flops? But if I had a sneaker on and I just raked it down the front of your shin? Yep. That hurts like heck. That's awful. It's yeah. so painful. How do we go for the leg in a way that is quick and, you know, oh, oh. you know, even, even just a distraction. So I think those are the, th the main things I, I would think about. It's that engage and back out, attack the throat, attack the legs. Mm -hmm. And if that all fails, you feel. All right. And what would your martial arts, what would it be called? The obvious choices are things like dog foo or canine foo, bark foo, bark foo. Bark foo. Oh, that could be. Bark roo. Oh, nice. So in, in Japanese, if you don't know, roo would be school. So yeah. school of bark. School of bark. I love it. I love it. That was good. All right. Next question. This is from uh, another listener of the show, uh, Gianfranco Moresu. You've given us a bunch. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and by the way, if you're, if you're watching, hopefully you're watching, but if you're watching or listening to this, if you want to submit questions for the next one, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Yeah, don't, don't. We bypass me on these. Yeah, I, I haven't seen these before. Uh, I, I post in the Facebook group sometimes that I'm looking for them and uh, people sometimes will post the question there, but then Jeremy can see it. I don't yeah. want him to see it. Yeah. I want to be surprised. And I'm assuming you write them down and delete them quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, this one is very uh, timely because mm. the Olympics is coming up very soon. Maybe. By the, well, maybe. Uh, theoretically, hopefully, yeah. And by the time this comes out, they will or will not have. But 
in the Olympics, we've got wrestling, mm-hmm. we have uh, taekwondo, mm-hmm. we've got judo. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're you know potentially Fen- karate, fencing, fen- you know they're Boxing. all of the yep all of these different combat sports, yep. and they're all doing similar things. Is it too many? Are there too many similar things? <laughs> it, it's a, it's a great question because on the one hand you have people who participate in those individual pursuits, sports, and they want to do their thing their way. And if you at all followed the debacle that was agreeing on the rule set for karate going into the Olympics, Hmm. it was a debacle. And it came down to martial arts politics and a lot of infighting. And so we're there. If I am a Taekwondo player and you're a karate person and we look at our competitive competitive combative rule sets, Mm -hmm. we see that they're dramatically different. If I am not a martial artist and I watch those two people doing the things that they're doing, they look very similar to me. Mm -hmm. Why is there that thing and that thing? They look like almost the same thing. They're punching and kicking. Mm -hmm. And there's boxing. They're punching. Judo and wrestling. They're both wrestling with each other. I don't get it. So on the other hand, you know, one hand is people wanting to see their sport, their hobby pursuit represented in the Olympics. On the other hand, you've got attention. Where is the attention for this? And I think ultimately, this is why we are going to see MMA enter the Olympics and these other things pull out. Hmm. Because if there is one combat sport, and I'm not saying I want this, but if there is one combat sport that the average person with no martial arts background can engage in and enjoy, it's MMA. Hmm. Because it is very clear who is winning. Hey, that person's getting punched in the face a lot more than that person's getting punched in the face. They're losing. Versus Taekwondo, Karate, Judo, Boxing, Wrestling, and Fencing. Where all of them are scored in some way on points. And while if it is lopsided, yeah, you can see who's winning. Mm-hmm. But if it, at that level, it is rarely that lopsided. And you end up with people who, they're pretty close to one another. And so you don't, you don't see that obvious discrepancy. And so what happens from that? People tune out. Why do people watch the Olympics? Because they want to cheer their country on. They want to see some cool stuff. And they want to understand it. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason boxing has faded. Boxing used to be the most, one of, if not the most popular spectator sport in this country. Why has baseball faded? Why is football starting to fade? Rules. Mm -hmm. As the rules have come in, it's made it more difficult to understand. And your uh, casual spectator has a harder time engaging with it. And until we recognize that as martial artists and create rule sets where people can more easily understand what is going on, we will not see outside spectators. We will not see outside money and it won't happen. It won't grow. So it should be a wake up call Hmm. to all of our individual pursuits and the governing bodies for them to recognize that MMA is knocking on the door and will kick everything out. And it's not going away. It's not going away. <clears throat> in, un, until The only thing that would dethrone MMA in what it is are rules. Mm. Such dramatic rules that it becomes harder to understand and less enjoyable to watch, likely because of concussions. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. The only thing I would add is I think that uh, as much as I do, I would consider fencing a martial art. I used to teach fencing. Oh, I know that. Yep. Um, I do see it different enough from the other stuff because they're using an an implement that, uh, you know, I think fencing would stick around. 
because just because yes. of that aspect. Fencing would stick around. Uh, wrestling or judo would stick around. Yeah. Um, boxing would probably stick around. We would probably lose taekwondo and karate mm. to MMA. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So uh, question number four. This sure. came from a uh, good friend, Abby Hoy, uh, listener of the show. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Abby. She uh, just tested for her third degree. Oh. Uh, How'd it go? As we're recording this, she passed. Yay. Sprung yeah, on her last minute. Like she showed up to class and was like, you're testing today. Oh, what? You know, the fun here, we're, we're going, I'm taking a short tangent. You know, it'd be super fun mm. to find a way to celebrate listeners' achievements. Oh, that would be cool. I don't know how we do that. We talked about, we were trying to get that going with Listen Kick Live, and yeah. it just, we weren't getting enough people. So here's what I want you to do. If you have an achievement, if you or someone at your school, if there's something worth celebrating, <laughs> let's start getting those emailed in. Yeah. And we'll figure out what to do from there. Yep. Okay. And if and the lucky few might get mentioned on the podcast, like Abby. Congrats. Yeah. I don't see why why we can't sprinkle those absolutely those in the show. Absolutely. Uh, so you can tell she's a listener of the show because her question was: You have interviewed hundreds of people. I have. And you've likely worked with tons. I have. But if you could train with anyone in the world, alive or not, that you have or haven't trained with, who would it be? I and hate why? when my own questions are turned around on me. Um, so first off, I don't know what I said on episode 100. I meant to listen to it on my way up yeah, here. I forgot that, to. that would have been funny. Uh, there's a very good chance it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because people change as time goes on. That's right. That, that was two years in. So a little over two years in. So it's been four years, four years. Yep. since I recorded that. Shout out to my friend Daniel Hartz who interviewed me for that. If I could train with anybody. So my, my current attitude towards training is that the things that I know the least are the places that I want to train. So that opens up a couple possibilities. That's either like Chinese style, mm -hmm. you know, something more fluid, or it's grappling, judo, jujitsu sort of stuff. Um, I've done a little bit of judo. I've done some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I've done a little bit more stand-up, you know, <clears throat> Japanese jiu-jitsu, wrist locks and all that. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna say something on in the Chinese martial arts space. So if I think about training with someone out of that, whether it's wushu or kung fu, alive or dead. You know, the obvious answer here is Bruce Lee. And that's what everybody's going to think I'm going to say. And it's not. Yeah. Because I feel like Bruce Lee's impact has been felt by so many people. I'm indirectly training with him. Yep. But I'm thinking someone, I think I'm going to say Jet Li. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Because Jet Li was a legitimate high level wushu practitioner, did very, very well competitively and has done a whole bunch of movies. And so I think I could learn a few things from him. One, wushu, Chinese martial arts. Mm -hmm. Wushu is derived from Kung Fu. So I would learn that from him. Two, he was a phenomenal competitor. And if you watch him on screen, his ability to present his material, his technique in a solid way, I think I would learn something on the competitive side from him. And then three, there are very few people I can think of who do, in my opinion, a better job on screen mm. with choreography and presentation. So to me, this is a toss up between Jet Li and Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Um, but Jackie Chan for me is, I want to learn some stunt work and I want to learn on-screen choreography. Jet Li, I think it has, you know, there, there are more boxes to check. There. Yeah. So I think fair. that's why I'm going there. And, you know, it's a long list. There are so many people, you know, I honestly, like, like truly, at least half of the people that we have on the show, I'm like, man, I want to train with this person. Oh, I want to train. There are things that the, that the guests say that, I just want to hang out with them and train for a few hours. Like I am, you know, if you're, if you're a sci-fi Star Trek fan, like I want to Borg martial arts. <laughs> I want to absorb everything that they have and just assimilate 
their martial skills. I really do. Yeah. Great. That's a great answer. That's good. All right. You ready for the last one? Last one. Okay. I'm guessing this is from you. This one is from me. <laughs> yep. Will martial arts style still exist in 15 years? Why or why not? One five years? One five. Yes. Why or why not? Okay. Because whenever we have a new style come up, people don't leave it at, this is a hybrid of these two things. It always ends up with its own name. It always ends up codified, even if loosely. Mm -hmm. And we instinctively like to name things. We name our cars. And I don't just mean the model of car. You don't just mean Prius. But we often will name our cars, you know, the Prius is named Susan mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Or Henry, you know, whatever. Yeah. We name things. We name things, we, our love for naming things goes so far. There are things we name that I won't discuss on this show. And you all know what I'm talking about. So the idea that we in 15 years would be so far removed from our need to name things doesn't work for me. I, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. buy it. If, if you're going to refer to something, it's always easiest to name it. Our forms have names, our techniques have names. Now, could we reach a point where things become so hybridized that we reach a time where we don't refer to the names. It becomes martial arts or karate or mm -hmm. whatever. Yes, but I think that would, that would cycle out because there was a time, if, if we think about, at least in, in, in concept, and we don't seem to argue this, if we look at Kung Fu films, you go learn Kung Fu from that person. Mm -hmm. it's that person's kung fu it's not so much a style yeah it's kind of the same that the we did in a previous episode we recorded today you know the idea of using ru r-y-u for school you know it's jeremy ru jeremy's school of martial arts andrew ru mm -hmm. you know we could be teaching the same material but it's going to come through in a different way we have different teaching styles etc and i think that's okay so we may cycle out of it for a short time i don't think it's in 15 years i think it's longer than that but I think we very quickly go back to it. Interesting. Because it's a distinct, it's a, a, a distinguishing character. It's a life cycle. Yeah. Circle. Interesting. Oh, uh, cool. Not what you expected me to say? Uh, I didn't have an expectation okay. of what you would say. Um, I, I do think that it will, I think it could very easily happen that mm -hmm. styles will become less, I don't want to say important, but they will be less of a distinction. Sure. Because as people continue to do more cross training, like, for example, I studied Goju-ru, I studied Shotokan, and mm -hmm. I studied Shorin-ru. Mm -hmm. If I, I don't own my own school, but if I did, what am I going to teach? Well, it's probably going to be a little bit of all of them. And you're, So what do I call it? Probably I'm just going to call it karate. Karate, yeah. And so I think that inevitably that very easily could happen. Is it going to happen? I don't know. I think it'll happen for some. I think it already is <laughs> happening for some. But I don't think that it will ever go away completely. I think there will always be people that will stick to what they teach they're studying shore and rue right now and they're going to teach shore and rue and that's all they're ever going to do and that's that's fine there's nothing wrong with that sure. but i do i i could see a time where it starts to become less prevalent and less i don't want to say important mm. but less of a, a distinguishing feature that's all sounds good cool those are the five questions i had today all right and again if you have questions that you want to ask for the next one of these Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you have anything else, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick everywhere you can think of. And if you want to support what we do, if the, if the shows, the content, the social media, the blogs, the newsletters, if all the content that we put out means something to you, there are a number of ways you can help out. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. Whistlekickprograms.com. Buy a book on Amazon. Leave a donation at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Buy something at whistlecake.com with the code podcast15. Or you could also make guest or topic suggestions. You could tell people about the show. Honestly, the, the way that we continue to grow is somebody watching or a guest on the show mentions it to somebody else and we continue to grow. It's slow but steady, but we're growing. Thanks for being part of it. Anything to add? No, that's great. Okay. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and, and have, have a great day. day.